Hi, this is Michael, VK5ZEA, from Port Lincoln in South Australia. Um, I thought it was about time I showed you the progress I've made on my portable D-Star hotspot. Um, you would have seen the, uh, the short video I made before showing how I'm going to be laying things out. I would say 98% complete. It's, it's ready to go, it works, it's great. Um, a few more little things I want to button up, but um, it's on the whole, it's ready to go. Um, I'll get the radio out of the way. This is the, uh, the Pelican 1200 case, and we'll open it up. And there you can see, it looks a bit messy, but um, there's a space in there for like spare SD cards and uh, the, the antenna on the uh, DVAP. It's one of these uh, flexible diamond antennas, and uh, it does tend to uh, want to remain in a curved state, and you just give it a bit of a stroke and uh, <laughs> it, uh, it straightens up. So uh, I've uh, got the aluminium plates powder coated to, uh, to sort of match the tan colour of the case. Um, the uh, DVAP dongle is uh, attached with Velcro as is the case for the Raspberry Pi that arrived nicely. It's a, a nice clear plastic case. The Pi still does get a little bit hot in there so I may uh, cut some vents or put a maybe a little 40mm fan in there possibly to help cool it down. Now one thing I'm still waiting on is a um, a right angle USB cable to go between the Raspberry Pi and the USB hub. Uh, you can see I've got like an up angle cable here going to uh, an extension um, and I've got another cable uh, coming so hopefully the cable will shoot out that direction then under the shelf and into the back of the USB hub which I'll show you in a minute. Um, the other thing I'm in two minds about is what to do with the 3G dongle. Um, it's just sitting there floating at the moment and I was thinking about making some sort of bracket to attach onto where that screw mounts there and somehow hold the uh, USB socket sort of in that location or possibly that location so I can get at the antenna socket on the uh, 3G dongle but at the moment it's sort of it's sitting a bit loose uh, this is the power supply case this has got that little uh, switch mode module in it um, input is via uh, Anderson power poles and I've made up a short little uh, adapter cable here with a 2.1 millimeter DC socket but um, you, of course you can plug in any uh, if you've got an Anderson power lead, you can just plug it in and away you go. Um, but th this just allows me to plug in a, a plug pack or a wall wart power supply into uh, into the device. It draws uh, at 12 volts about 600 milliamps so it's not overly miserly, it, it does draw a bit of power. Um, things do get warm in here. Um, the DC out goes off to the uh, to the Microtik router and there's two 5 volt sockets on there, one of which um, runs the USB hub which also in turn runs the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. I was going to terminate this cable into a 2.1 millimeter plug to go into here but uh, at the moment it's going into the USB hub and I'll show you that when we lift this out of the case uh, in a minute. Um, and the good thing with this is this um, the, the Microtik router board will actually run on universal voltage. It goes anywhere from like 8 volts to, to 30 volts. So I could potentially run this on uh, 24 volts. Um, 24 volts will come straight through and uh, this router will be quite happy running on 24 volts and then the internal regulator will then of course regulate down to 5 volts for the uh, Raspberry Pi and USB hub. And I changed how I was going to do the uh, the USB hub. I was going to mount it on the bottom under here but I've decided to, um, to attach it to the underside of the shelf, mainly to leave that area vacant. I was toying with the idea of having a, uh, a small lithium ion battery pack under there as well for really portable operation, but at uh, 600 milliamp, um, it, it only would last maybe a couple of hours on, the, on, a, on a reasonable battery pack. So um, what I'll do now is I'll, um, I'll get this out of here. Um, I've undone the, the screws. Uh, this should just lift out. I'll uh, move the case back a bit and uh, this will just pull out hopefully. Uh, hopefully the case doesn't roll backwards too far. Close the lid and uh, I'll look in from the side here and you can see uh, the USB hub is now attached underneath that shelf and there's a small right angle USB lead plugs into there and there's a USB right angle cable in the back which is the one that goes off to the uh, to the Raspberry Pi and that's the 5 volt DC in for the for the hub 
space once again for a 70 centimeter DVAP and uh, if you look under here there's uh, two USB plugs this one is the DC power 5 volts goes to the Raspberry Pi um, and uh, there's, like I said, there's a little bit of room under here possibly could fit some sort of battery pack in there I'm not sure the uh, the hub the uh, the router is secured via these two I think I showed that before um, that's that sits there quite nicely and the uh, the Raspberry Pi is attached with velcro under the case there which raises it up a little bit there's a vent on the bottom uh, but it still does get, get quite warm so that may end up having some sort of fan assisted uh, cooling on there as well so what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll power this up it should be ready to go uh, we'll be able to see it all happening um, I'll, I'll, let's put it back in the case let's let's make it let's do it properly I'll put it back in the case and uh, it just sort of fits in there quite nicely and once again four millimeter screws come up from underneath and uh, and hold that in there um, let me just grab some DC power and we'll connect it into the power lead and things are coming alive uh, the nice clear case lets you see the LEDs on the Raspberry Pi nicely and the uh, 3G dongle is blinking DVAP dongle has got power and if we look underneath we can well, we can't see but there are LEDs on the front of the USB hub that indicates when the ports are active so at the moment the uh, Raspberry Pi is booting the Jonathan Naylor uh, the G4KLX IRC DDB gateway software um, I'm listening to the uh, the DVAP on my IC91 AD and uh, hopefully okay so we've got uh, the blue light indicating comms with the software the light blue LED means we've got 3G I should be able to issue a connect command um, I'll link up to reflector 1C I think there's a bit of activity on there at the moment um, so I'll just link up and see if it works I'll key up on here Um, they can still hear me on 10. Okay, there we go. So, as some guy say, You can well, see the DVAP is talking, up. transmitting. If you cannot hear that person. And we can see I network activity. And the LED on the front of the router is uh, a network activity. I've configured that for network well, activity. Um, oh, that sounds like uh, that's Barry, MM6BFH. So that's coming through the 3G network. And you can see, I mean, the, the, the blue LED is showing like USB data throughput. And the fact that it's not overly a steady blinking means that the data is coming in at a fairly sporadic sort of rate um, but uh, once again it's, it's still clear uh, but I, I enjoy uh, my uh, little network in the morning there is one guy uh, I so do we'll just bring really up the call sign. that's two echo zero and um, that is a guy in Switzerland Charlie Juliet now, Hotel I think it's got Carol. To be complete, Let's bring up the message. Uh, so we can bring up the uh, propagation. This is one hand. Receive message from Greenwich, Scotland. It doesn't worry us in the mornings. We know we're so this, um, it, like I said, this is this is basically ready to go. Um, I do want to add some sort of um, storage in the lid for for cables and uh, for spare SD cards. Um, the SD card is it's fairly readily accessible. You can sort of grab it from the back and pull it out. Yep, so it's Carol and uh, and Barry there, both in both in Scotland, um, I believe. So, uh, so wherever we are, as long as we've got 3G coverage, I can uh, switch this on and. Uh, have uh, D-Star connectivity. Now the other thing which is the, the main reason I went for the separate router again is that if I wanted to uh, run this here at home I don't need to use the uh, the 3G dongle I've got network here so I can just unplug the uh, the network cable from the Raspberry Pi plug it into a network switch or into my network here somewhere at home the Raspberry Pi will um, will grab an IP address via DHCP and um, it'll work quite happily without having to reconfigure anything in the Raspberry Pi and of course the the router also gives me a, a 3G 
network connect, uh, Wi-Fi network connection that uses the 3G connection. So I can use my laptop or my mobile phone with this, or indeed I can also plug into one of the Ethernet ports on the front here to plug in something hardwired to use that 3G connection. So it's a fairly universal toolkit, D-Star hotspot slash internet connection that um, is uh, very portable, um, easy to use, um, almost bulletproof and uh, really really handy. I'm going to have a great time with this when I go away for work. I'll be able to uh, take this with me in the car and uh, have, have D-Star when I'm away from home. So uh, there you go. That's the, the project as it stands so far. I think it's come together quite well and uh, really look forward to uh, having some fun with this device. Anyway, this is Michael, VK5ZEA from Paul Lincoln in South Australia, 7.3's for now. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll talk to you again soon.